With no conscience and no remorse, the Cowboys opted not to discipline number 76 today. No conscience, no remorse, just like number 76 himself. Quote, it's the most awesome period of my life, man. I'm a Dallas Cowboy, end quote. Sounds like every kid's dream to say that in an interview, doesn't it? Well, it's time to disable the dream because the Cowboys are enabling the nightmare. If you don't already know, in May of last year, 76 threw his then-girlfriend onto a couch full of assault rifles and choked her. Two months later, found guilty. Seven months later, upon appeal, the victim no-showed in court and the case fell apart. The Cowboys then enabled because that's their M.O. He threw his girlfriend onto a couch of assault rifles. And because this isn't a big deal in his mind, in his first interview with the Dallas media, he immediately said he wanted to come out, quote, guns blazing. His disrespect for his past and women continued when he discussed how much he wanted to see Tom Brady's wife and her sister. No conscience, no remorse. Yesterday, in a fit of rage that the Cowboys, of course, spun his passion, he lost it on the sidelines. He yanked at a coach's clipboard, and he screamed at Des Bryant, which prompted NFL ESPN writer Jane McManus to tweet this beauty, thank goodness Des Bryant isn't a woman. Following yesterday's game, 76 asked if anyone had any questions, and Drew Davis and Kylie transcribed the ensuing interview, in which 76 provided eight no comments, four next questions, five any other questions, all the while interrupting every media member that tried to speak. Presumably, that's his MO for women, too. Like 76 himself, this screams of someone desperately seeking attention, which we have to find a way to ignore while knowing the Cowboys won't. They are the enablers. Jerry Jones is an enabler. Jones seriously with a straight face called 76 a leader last night. How does anyone take either of them seriously? Do you know why the Cowboys are enabling 76? Not because, as Jason Garrett spun it today, he's a work in progress. It's because in two games, 76 sacked the quarterback three times, and the Cowboys are two and four, and they need wins. It's just too simple to stand here and demand that the Cowboys cut 76. It's just too simple to stand here and demand that 76 never play another down in the NFL. He'd find a home thanks to that talent. The Cowboys, though, must do something, or it's only going to get worse. That's all very obvious. What's not simple is actually doing something to create more awareness. For the lack of awareness, the NFL actually shows toward domestic violence. Because as we've seen, they are enablers too. They are the league that continues to harbor these type of players. Today is October 26th, five days to go in Domestic Violence Month. What can we do to create said awareness? I'm literally asking, what can we do? At what point is the environment of football creating more harm than benefit for 76 and everyone like him? For everyone in that locker room, 76 is a sick human being that needs help. Feel free to join my small protest and don't say his name. Don't give him the attention he's craving. It's not much, but it's a start. With no conscience and no remorse, the Cowboys opted not to discipline number 76 today. No conscience, no remorse, just like number 76 himself. We're back after this. I think everybody needs to just stay off of social media, really. <laughs> Me, personally. I think we just need to get back and regain our focus and, and know what the task at hand is. And the task at hand is beating Oklahoma on Saturday. Hey, speaking of Texas OU week, you know the drill by now, right? Get the OU out of my last name and get the UT in all week long. Paul Boyette left the light on to a great idea. Get off social media. It burned Chris Boyd Saturday and it led to chaos today. First question, will the upperclassmen quit on this team knowing that the freshmen are the future? You know, a lot of times people think that, hey, they're going through tough times. Guys, kids, they won't check out because the thing about it is they just want to continue to compete. And, and what they want to see happen is they want, they don't want to be that group that says, hey, you know what, this group quit on it. They're saying, like, the coach, no, no, we're not, we're, we, I don't know where that's coming from. We're not going to quit. All right, no quit, but a definite riff. Dylan Haynes walked on at Texas and earned his starting spot at free safety. He's earned the right to say what he thinks. Today he did that, and it gave us an insight into the Texas bigger picture. A lot of people want to talk about, you know, these freshmen and this freshman class coming in, you know, us playing a lot of freshmen, and, and you know, that's, and that's great for them, but the team starts with the seniors and the juniors. You know, we have some juniors and seniors trying to lead those freshmen, and, you know, some of them are resistant and hesitant to change and because, you know, they haven't been a, a follower before. Like I said, you know, in high school, they were the leaders and stuff, so, you know, we're just trying to get them on the right track because, you know, a lot of them just kind of want to go out and, and, and play, and that's all they want to do, and that's all they know because that's all they did in high school. 
Okay, so the freshmen didn't necessarily like some of the things that Haynes insinuated, so they went to social media to express their feelings. Freshman defensive end Charles Omanehu, people get in front of cameras and just talk their heads off. Always remember, think before you speak. Freshman wideout DeAndre McNeil wrote a note uh, on Twitter and including it in the note, he said, we're supposed to be a team, but instead we're bashing on each other. If you don't want to be here at Texas, then kick rocks. We don't accept mediocre anything. We are here to pull Texas out of the drought so you can either get with it or get lost. Finally, uh, Armonte Foreman, the wide receiver, added, I walk around on campus every day, no bodyguard. If you have something to say, please say it to me and stop hiding behind Twitter. Where are we at as a team? All this begs the question, why isn't Charlie Strong putting an end to it before it begins? Intentionally or unintentionally, maybe it's because he doesn't mind it. As Strong changed the culture at Texas, he suspended, he dismissed, and he core valued this team in his first year. Moving forward, it's about moving forward, which means it is about the young players, which means it is about adversity and struggle and blowout losses, which means more than anything, and I just can't reiterate this enough, it's about patience and time. This dissension is great because it shows passion. Ignorant national analysts can call for Charlie's job all they want. It's an uninformed opinion, and it's as, uh, as uninformed an opinion as you'll find. Charlie Strong is doing good things at Texas, and like he said last week, it's going to flip. Like he said today, joking, it's not all bad. It's so funny because I, I, mean, I guess people think I'm dying. Sad. I mean, <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's tough. As Ferris Bueller told Cameron Fry, you're not dying, you just can't think of anything good to do. Cameron went out and had the best day of his life. Charlie might just do the same sooner than you think. We're back after this.